Good morning. It's good to see you all this morning. With COVID going on and everything else, we don't have any announcements today. Isn't that nice? <laughs> nice and bad because a lot of ministries are kind of on the back burner right now because of that too. So please stand if you would as we share our prayer reinforcing why we've come today. Join me, please. God, I've come today to lift my heart and voice to bless you, to meet with you, and to be blessed by you. Thank you for being here to meet with me. Psalm 145, verses 13 and 14 declares, Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he, in all he, he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. Regardless of what we're going through in this life, God is with us, God is for us, and he is still worthy of our worship, our love, our adoration. So if you're alive and breathing, praise the Lord. Join me in prayer, please. Lord, we exalt you and honor you as our King of kings and Lord of lords. Lord, we know we live in a fallen world. We live in a fallen world with ourselves being fallen and broken people, living with other fallen and broken people. And we pray for your grace, God, every day that faith would arise, that we would, you would increase our, our faith and trust in you to meet our needs, to give us our daily bread, physically, emotionally, spiritually. That you would encourage us to, to walk with you, that you can strengthen us every day, mind, body, and spirit, that you can increase our, our faith and trust in you to be with us in the midst of our tough times. Increase our faith and trust in you, God. Not just for us as individuals and our families, but our, our nation and world as well. We continue to pray for our national leadership in particular, that we would choose to get along with one another, that we would choose to ag agree to disagree and yet still show love and respect for one another. And there are major differences, naturally. And we pray for our president and Congress. We pray your blessings upon them but we also pray, God, that they would be attuned to your spirit. That they would make their decisions based on your truth that comes from your word you've given us. Stir our hearts, to God, to be praying for our leadership. And Lord, we thank you for being here this morning. We thank you for your presence that is here through your Holy Spirit. Continue to meet with us. Open our hearts and minds and spirits to your word now. 
And lastly, God, we pray for Diane Kay and the family as she prepares for her back surgery, not this Monday, but the following Monday, the 8th. That you would prepare her and the family emotionally in particular and, and physically for Diane. And even now, we, we begin to pray for the surgeon, the anesthetist, everybody involved, that the surgery will be successful. So be glorified, God, within and through our lives and within and through your church. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. This is the third message in our series on the 23rd Psalm. Last week, we saw how the Lord is our provider, wanting to meet our essential external needs of food, clothing, and shelter, wanting to meet our internal needs of being loved and accepted, the need for meaning and purpose and significance. And he wants to meet our eternal need of being in relationship with God in this life now and for all eternity in heaven through receiving Christ as one's Lord and Savior. This morning, we're starting to look at the second verse. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. The author of our small group study on the 23rd Psalm uses verse 2 to address the importance of Sabbath that we will look at today. But there's a fuller meaning of this verse that we'll look at the following week. And it has to do with spending time with God in his word in particular. That he can feed us with the grasses of his, of his scripture. And his Holy Spirit can use them to, to give us what we need. To give us his peace, his love, strength for the day and, and hope for tomorrow. We live in a very fast-paced, anxiety-filled world. A Tahoma, Washington newspaper carried the story of Tattoo the Basset Hound. From the driver's seat, Tattoo's owner reached over and opened the passenger door to let Tattoo out when they arrived at the house. But as Tattoo was Getting out of the car, the leash got stuck when the driver closed the door. The driver was going to run another errand. The, door, the dog had not planned on going for a run, but he did. After a little while, a motorcycle officer noticed the poor basset hound was, quote, picking them up and putting them down as fast as he could. The officer hit his lights and siren and pulled the car over. Tattoo was rescued, but not before he had reached a top speed of 25 miles an hour and falling down and rolling over several times. He was pretty battered and bruised. Many people are living our lives like tattoo. We're picking them up and putting them down as fast as we can, and at times it feels like maybe we're just being dragged through this life. And we get battered and we get bruised. And we wonder, is anyone going to come and open the door and free my leash and set me free. So 
so I can stop, catch my breath, and heal. God desires to refresh us every day. But we have to make the choice to come to him, to lie down in his green pastures and beside his still refreshing waters. The root meaning of the Hebrew word Sabbath is to cease, to desist. It is to stop what one is doing. We're told in Genesis 2, verses 2 and 3, but the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing, the work of creation. So on the seventh day he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Now God did not rest because he was tired. God is all-powerful, almighty spirit being who doesn't get tired. He rested or he simply stopped doing what he was doing because he was finished. But we're not God. Sometimes we think we are, don't we? We're not God. We have a frail human body and a soul that gets tired and exhausted physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So God instituted the Sabbath, which was originally Friday sundown until Saturday sundown in the Jewish faith, as a day of rest. Moses writes in Exodus 31, 16 and 17, the Israelites are to observe the Sabbath, celebrating it for generations to come as a lasting covenant. It will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he abstained from work and rested. The basic purpose of the Sabbath, then, is rest for our bodies and refreshment for our souls. Our soul can be seen as our mind, our will, our emotions. We not only need physical rest, we need an emotional rest as well. We have a vacation coming up in March for school break. And typically we would go to Pennsylvania, spend time with family, but because of COVID and traveling and everything else, we're just going to stay in Massachusetts. But it's real tough for me to stay in the parsonage right next door here for a week's vacation and feel emotionally rested. Because I'm still on the premises. It's like a storekeeper living above or next to the store. I'm still at work. So we're going to get away a little bit but stay in the state. We need an emotional rest and not just physical rest. If you're getting up in years a little bit, it's a nice way to say if you're getting old. Do you remember the old blue laws? When I was growing up, most stores were closed on Sunday. Saturday is when everyone did their shopping, ran their errands. There were very, very few sports or activities for children on Sunday mornings. Like the Jewish Sabbath, it was to be a day of rest, 
relaxation, a time for family. But the pendulum has swung so far in the other direction. And with few exceptions, like Chick-fil-A, to put a plug in for Chick-fil-A, with few exceptions, it seems like everything is open on Sundays now. Kids' sports are all over the place. This means many people in retail end up working, not resting, not spending time with family. And for others who have off work, Sunday's still another day of work because we fill it with all kinds of other things to do. But when do we take the time to get refreshed? God mandated the Sabbath to be an energizing blessing. But in the Old New Testament, it actually became a burden. The Jewish leaders had gone to the other extreme and added so, so many man-made rules and regulations to the Sabbath. The Talmud, the Jewish book of traditions, has 24 chapters listing various Sabbath laws. Now, all God had said in, that ten, in the Ten Commandments was, take a break. Try not to work. Don't work. You need a day off. But look at some of the restrictions man added to that general principle. You could not travel more than 3,000 feet or about three quarters of a mile on the Sabbath. So if your widowed mother lived three quarters of a mile away or less, it's okay to visit her. But if your widowed mom lived a mile away, sorry, you weren't allowed to visit her on the Sabbath. Cooking and baking were not permitted because they were work. You could not tie or untie anything. You could not sew two stitches. One stitch was okay, but not two. Putting out a fire was prohibited. So if your house was on fire, you were not permitted to put it out unless somebody's life was in danger because it was work. They defined all these things as work. But they missed God's basic intention for the Sabbath. It was not to me to be a legalistic, don't do this, 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 this. It was, hey, you need a break. You need a break from work, but you need time to spend with me, God says. You need time to spend with family. So what was started by God to be a refreshing blessing turned out to be a legalistic bondage that he never intended. Jesus often challenged the Pharisees with their man-made traditions. And there are a lot of man-made traditions in denominations and churches we have to be careful of. In Mark 2, 23 to 28, we're told, one Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields. And as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, look, what, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar, the high priest, 
He entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. The disciples were just having a snack of grain as they walked through the fields, but the Pharisees saw them as breaking at least three Sabbath rules. First, picking the grain heads was considered reaping, Rubbing them in their hands to remove the grain from the stalk was considered threshing. Getting rid of the stalks and leaves was winnowing. Jesus ends up challenging them. The Sabbath was made for man. It was to be a blessing for human beings and not man for the Sabbath, not some legalistic rules, regulations thing. The Sabbath was meant to refresh and enhance and bless people's lives and not be a straitjacket made up of so many legalistic traditions. It was meant to provide rest for our bodies and refreshment for our spirits as we meet with God and meet with God's people. So let's look briefly now at letter A, three types of Sabbath that we consistently need. The first is physical Sabbath. Our bodies need rest. Paul reminds us in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The pattern of this world is to work until you're worn out and shop until you drop. And yet God says we're to offer our bodies to him as a living sacrifice, which includes honoring God in how we use our bodies and includes taking care of our bodies. One way we honor God with our bodies is to take letter A, proper rest from work. Notice I didn't say proper rest at work, where you're not giving your employer 100% and doing a, honoring God by doing a good job. Proper rest from work is making sure you're taking some adequately time off daily to get refreshed, to be with family, and some adequately time off weekly by taking at least one and ideally two days off of the weekend. I know everybody schedules differently. Depending on one's job, there's a rotating schedule. You may have to work a Saturday periodically, even a Sunday periodically, depending on nursing and everything else, different professions. And that's okay. But we have to make sure we're, we're taking some time to rest. Mark reminds us in chapter 6, 30 to 32, the apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going, that they did not even have a chance to eat. They were so busy in ministry, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. 
So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. Jesus made sure his fellow kingdom workers weren't overextending themselves. He made sure they rested physically. But sometimes we can exchange one kind of work for another. For example, we work hard all week, but then on the weekend we fill our time with all kinds of other work, including things like doing the laundry, food shopping, cleaning, mowing the lawn in season, or whatever it might be. Now, I know these things need to be done, but maybe in our scheduling we can learn to spread them out a little bit. So we have at least a few chunks of time periods on the weekends to sit and veg, to read, to watch some appropriate television. Depends on on what you do, what relaxes you. Do we really have to fill up all the time? In his book, Sabbath, Restoring the Sacred Rhythm of Rest, Wayne Mueller says, even if we were to leave work behind and seek the comfort and security of a monastery, we would still be handed a broom and told to sweep the walks. Even in monasteries, we must cook and clean, build and repair, garden and sweep, But there is a time to sweep and a time to put down the broom and rest. Along with getting some rest from work, a physical Sabbath also includes, letter B, it includes proper sleep. Solomon writes in Ecclesiastes 5.12, the sleep of a laborer is sweet. God created us in such a way that our bodies need rest. We need sleep every day. And depending on how we wired, that might mean six hours or seven hours or eight hours. It all depends how we're wired and what our body needs in order to get physically refreshed and rejuvenated. A physical Sabbath also includes letter C. I knew this was coming. (laughs) Proper diet and exercise. I need to practice more what I preach. (laughs) We need to take care of the temple that God has given us by watching what kind of food we eat and how much we eat getting appropriate exercise. Part of a Christian stewardship in taking care of our bodies is making sure that we have proper diet and proper exercise, proper rest from work, proper sleep, and appropriate diet and exercise as well. Again, I do pretty good with the first two, but the last two, I don't do that well in. Paul challenges us in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Do you not know that your, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You have been bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Honor God with how we use our body in appropriate ways. In context, he's talking about sexuality here. Honor God with how we use our bodies. 
but also honor him by taking care of our bodies. But along with a consistent physical Sabbath, we also need number two, we need a consistent emotional Sabbath. We need emotional breaks from all the stuff that life throws at us. Jesus spoke about this rest from our worries and frustrations in his classic words to Martha in Luke 10, 38 to 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do this work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. We see Martha needing not only a physical rest, we see her needing an emotional break as well. She was worried and upset about many things, and it was wearing her down, draining her energy. Sometimes the emotional break can come from simply getting away from the situation for a while. Again, exercise helps release emotional stress. The United States Surgeon General reported that exercise, quote, reduces symptoms of anxiety and depression and fosters improvements in mood and feelings of well-being a lot of benefits to exercise. Can raise the levels of chemicals, our endorphins, adrenaline, serotonin, dopamine in the brain that enhances moods and relieves stress. Jesus also tells his followers in Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30. He says, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, old King James says, heavy laden, come to me and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls, emotional rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He tells us when you are physically and emotionally exhausted, when you're drained and stressed, come to me. Come and sit in the green pastures and beside the still waters of my very presence. Come to me in prayer. Come to me in personal worship. Come to me and let me speak to you through my word. Come to me and I will refresh you. Author Warren Wearsby has shared the ability to calm your soul and wait before God is one of the most difficult things in the Christian life. Our old nature is restless. The world around us is frantically in a hurry. But a restless heart usually leads to a restless life. The emotional rest and refreshment we desperately need will not happen, though, 
unless there is physical rest, and unless there is number three, unless we have consistent spiritual Sabbath. Many times we get so busy that we end up too busy for God. We get so stressed, we try to take charge of the situation without God's help, without his wisdom, without his power. And then we wonder why we're so emotionally drained. What does a spiritual Sabbath look like? A spiritual Sabbath first includes letter A, weekly corporate worship. The author of Hebrews challenges us, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Our time together Sunday morning is to be a time when we primarily gather to bless God through our worship, to bring joy to his heart as we lift words of praise to him from our spirits, from the core of our being. It brings joy to God's heart in the same way parents hearing from a child, I love you, mom, I love you, dad. If you're a parent, you know the joy that that brings. That's the joy that God receives. And more when his people say, I love you, Dad, through our worship and our praise of him. And scripture then says, he inhabits those praises. His presence comes and fellowships with us spirit to spirit. There is nothing that can meet that need for fellowship with God. Nothing the world offers can provide that. And Sunday morning is a time we not only get together and hear God's word, which is so important, but we fellowship with him spirit to spirit. It's a time when we also grow in relationship with one another and show love and concern for one another as God's people. And that's been so tough to do with COVID stuff and social distancing. And those that are huggers like myself. I just miss those hugs. So be prepared when this is over, okay? Just let you know right now. But we're not only to be connecting with God once a week as we gather at his people, as his people. That spiritual refreshment isn't going to be enough to carry us through the rest of the week. What Jesus is teaching us in the Lord's Prayer with give us this day our daily bread, he's teaching us we need a daily spiritual Sabbath as well. We need to be spiritually fed, fed and refreshed by God on a daily basis. And this happens through letter B, through daily personal devotions. Taking time daily to read God's word, to be praying, to be like Mary, sitting at Jesus' feet, to allowing his presence to refresh us. To listen to what Jesus might want to say to us through his word. Where he can reinforce his love, his comfort, his encouragement, where he will also challenge us as well. We'll look at that more next week. David writes in Psalm 27, verse 4, 
one thing, one thing above all else that I would ask of the Lord? This is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. David shared that a priority in his life was the spiritual Sabbath of dwelling in God's presence, of fellowshipping with God all the days or each and every day of his life. And that's not only having a daily quiet time of of time reading scripture, of time in prayer, time in worship. It's interacting with God throughout the day. There's an old classic book that's tremendous called Practicing the Presence of God. And it's from time to time throughout the day just having conversation with God. Whether it's somebody coming to mind and praying for them, whether it's a need we have any given moment, It's just consistently interacting with God throughout the day. Rather than just, I've I've done my half hour quiet time now and I'm good and we don't think about God for the next 24 hours. That's not what relationship with God is to be. It's to be consistent, periodic interaction with him. We need our spirit refreshed in God's presence daily. We are not like the energizer bunny who just keeps going and going and going. But no matter how good that bunny's batteries may be, eventually they're going to wear down and they're going to have to be recharged. We need recharging daily with God's daily bread. We come now to letter B. We see Jesus' example here. When we look at Jesus' life, it's easy to remember his preaching and his teaching, his miracles, his healings, his deliverances. But it's important to remember he often left his followers and he often left the needs of the crowds to get off by himself, to be with his God. Because he knew he could only do what he saw his father doing. He knew he needed God's presence to be coming upon him and anointing him and flowing through him. Luke 5, 15 and 16, we're told, yet the news about him spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. He made it a habit because he knew the necessity He knew personally the need to get physically and emotionally and spiritually revived and refreshed. Jesus was indeed fully God, but he was also fully human. And he needed that interaction with God to be strengthened to do what God was calling him to do. But for Jesus, Sabbath was not about following all the man-made Sabbath rules and regulations that they had come up with. For Jesus, Sabbath was about relationship. It was about how that consistent time with God would enhance his personal relationship with God and enhance his relationship with others. 
It's also our personal relationship with God through Christ. It is God alone who provides us with the daily bread of physical, emotional, and spiritual strength as we spend time with him. How consistent are we in taking a physical Sabbath? How are we doing at taking a break from our job for at least one, if not two days a week? At least taking chunks of the weekend for rest. With getting enough sleep, with diet and exercise. Are we getting refreshed emotionally and spiritually by attending corporate worship consistently, meeting with God as we gather here? and then meeting with him, ideally, on a daily basis. Getting that daily bread, physical, emotional, spiritual strength we need to deal with life. There's one time Jesus was healing somebody. He knew he healed them because he said, I felt the power go out of me. And Jesus knew he needed to receive power to be that conduit of God. We need consistent time with God, time in his word, time in prayer. It's the only way we're going to be able to lie down in green pastures and rest beside still waters. Life is hard. Life is messy. And God continues to say to us, come to me. All you who are weary and heavy laden, come to me and I will give you rest. Let's pray. Lord, the same way we are refreshed physically and emotionally through the Sabbath rest of sleep and time off work, we are refreshed physically, emotionally, and spiritually by resting in your presence, by time with you through prayer, worship, time reading your word. Help us, God, not to add all kinds of man-made rules to the Sabbath. But help us also not to diminish its importance, but to see its value and the example that you yourself have provided for us. Help us to follow you, our good shepherd, so that we can indeed lie down in the green pastures of your word and be fed by it and rest beside the still waters of your very presence, God. Be glorified in our lives, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Scoot to the rear and say hi in the lobby. We end up going through this life relying on our own human stuff. And our own human stuff isn't enough. God created us to be in relationship with him.
and every day to be interacting with him and to be fed emotionally and spiritually by him. We need God's presence. So may we draw near to him this week to be fed by him, that we are then strengthened to do his will in our lives on a daily basis. God bless. Have a good week.